Hi, welcome to Season 3, Episode 8 of The Weekly Wave. I'm Matthew Lyons. And I'm Aaron Johnson. And our special guest here today is the town manager of Abington, Mr. Scott Lambayese. How are you? Good, how are you? Thanks for having me. Thank you for coming. We've been trying to get you on the show for <laughs> months at this point, and you've always agreed and yeah. something has gone wrong, but we finally got you here. And, and no less on Groundhog Day, so... <laughs> <laughs> so shadow. you'll never saw leave. my shadow. <laughs> <laughs> um, so to start off, for those um, who don't know, what are the responsibilities of a town manager? So um, it, it varies from town to town, actually, and, and some towns have town managers, some towns have town administrators, um, some might have a similar position called executive secretary. Uh, but in, in the town of Abington, it's spelled out in the town charter um, what the responsibilities of the town manager are. Um, and so basically I'm your, your chief operating officer, uh, chief financial officer. Uh, you know, I, I put together the, the budget, the operating budget for the town. I take care of all personnel issues, the hiring, appointments. I appoint the police chief, the fire chief, all the department heads. Um, you know, any uh, contractual matters, disciplinary matters that might arise from that, um, you know, go through my office. And I report directly to the Board of Selectmen, um, you know, the selectmen of the elected officials that sort of, um, you know, they sort of dictate what they, what, what they would like to see the, um, uh, you know, the big picture of what they want the town to, to become and, and, and what we would like to do. And that sort of comes down to me. It's sort of a board of directors coming down and saying, you know, this is what we want from our organization and we expect you to get us there somehow. Yeah. And also on top of that, you have your own show. I want you to tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, yeah, actually. And, and you know, with, with Abington Cable and, and Kevin and the gang, um, a show called Town Manager's Corner. And really the idea of that was to um, go out in, and visit with the different department heads in the different departments because not everybody knows what, you know, the, the organizational makeup of the town. There's, you know, there's a, there's a um, public safety section, there's, there's a public work section, there's public health. Um, you know, we have, uh, you know, we have a uh, treasurer collector, we have an accounting department. Uh, so there's all these other, you know, all these different things that are going on in town. Uh, so I thought it was nice to be able to go and visit with these different department heads and to say, hey, you know, what's going on? What do you do? What do you do for the, you know, for the town? Um, tell us about yourself. And like yourselves, I mean, very much you try to get topical and, you know, what's going on um, around us today. And one of the big things is obviously the pandemic. So it's, hey, how's that affecting your department? And how's that affecting how you go about doing business. Right. Um, it's, it's weird to think because, you know, Abington is seen as like a relatively small town, but there are still mm -hmm. so many different like um, sections that, you know, go into um, every decision that's made. It's crazy to think about. Um, going off what you said about the pandemic, I'm going to ask you the same question. How has your job changed um, since the start of the pandemic? Well, I, ca I walked in on the pandemic, so it was kind of interesting. Uh, you know, the opportunity came up and I, I want to say I started in May, and I, I basically, um, I think the decision had been made to shut Town Hall probably two weeks or so before I got here. So it was very different to walk into what was essentially uh, an empty building. Um, you know, the, the department heads were all sort of working remotely and getting their stuff done, uh, but it was, it was very decentralized and very difficult to sort of those first couple weeks um, so it was, it was a big adjustment um, gradually as they came back and we opened up pretty early on. We got everybody back in the building and you know, we figured out what we needed to do, uh, much like yourselves with putting up protective screens, wearing masks, checking temperatures, whitewashing hands. And you know, we found that there was a way that we could all be in the building and work together. And um, you know, so once we began doing that and we got to meet and collaborate and talk and get to know each other, it, it, uh, you know, things worked a lot smoother. Yeah. And, and meeting all those different department heads must have been hard. How many department heads did you meet? Uh, well, we have, I don't know, there's probably a half a dozen or a dozen. I mean, we have a, you know, as you said, you know, the, the, the ones you obviously know of, the police chief and the fire chief. Um, we have a DPW director. And under him, there's actually a couple of different divisions. And, you know, we have an accountant who's, um, who I made um, the um, assistant town manager also. So she has multiple functions. but. Um, 
you know, we have a treasurer collector, the treasurer collector who, you know, collects the money for the town. And, you know, we have an assessor, a town assessor who goes out and values the property so we know how much tax to charge on the properties. We have a building commissioner whose responsibility is to go out and make sure that, um, you know, buildings like this are safe at all times. And at the same time, you make sure that new buildings as they're going up are properly permitted. There's, um, you know, we have a water department. We have probably one of the busiest men in town hall is our public health director. And I'm not sure if he's been on your show yet, but, um, you know, Marty Golightly is probably one of the busiest men in the world these days between, uh, you know, having to enforce COVID regulations. And at the same time, he's been sort of a leader on the South Shore in setting up the um, vaccine sites and, and, and sort of the, uh, you know, collaborating with, our, with the fire chief, John Nuttall, to sort of come up with a way to make it safe and get people in and vaccinate them as much as possible. Yeah. yeah, I hear his name at least like I want to say like once a day. He is the He's most a... popular guy. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes in a good way, sometimes in a bad way. Yeah, I've been afraid to ask him because he's so busy. I know. <laughs> like he's doing important stuff. I don't want to. Yeah. Hey, no, on? but you know what? It, uh, a lot of what he does and a lot of what he needs to do is get information out. Yeah. Um, and he and he does it in a very good way. Uh, you know, but it is it's it, it's it's letting people know that we're here. We're on it. Um, we're, we're doing everything we can to, you know, operate and to operate safely and keep everybody safe and eventually get them vaccinated. And, um, as you know, as fast as the state and the feds can get supply to us, Marty's getting it out there and getting it into people. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it is a lot, but, uh, I, I'm sure he'd be happy to talk to you at some point, maybe when it settles. Maybe yeah. this yeah, spring. <laughs> Um, so when did you decide you wanted to be the town manager? Was this always a lifelong dream or one day did you just mm, yeah, kind of see well, the opportunity? I don't know, it was probably 15, 16 years ago. I, um, I actually, um, you know, I owned a, a construction company. I did a lot of, um, actually it's more than that now, but I did uh, commercial construction and, and residential construction and I decided I wanted to, you know, I, I was tired of chasing, chasing the projects, chasing uh, the money, and I uh, wanted to go into become a building inspector, municipal building inspector. So I went to the, saw an ad at the town of Duxbury, and they were looking for a municipal building inspector. And um, I answered the ad, and I walked in, and the, uh, you know, I looked and talked to the town manager, and I said, you know, that job actually looks even better than this one. So, <laughs> so I, I worked over the years to sort of make my way up through the through the uh, uh, town hall and, and, you know, my responsibilities grew and I learned and did what I had to do. But it was always my goal at, at probably after five years in there to, you know, eventually become a town manager. Yeah. Wow. What would you say is the highlight of your job? The highlight? Yeah. Um, well, it, it takes time. The, the, the highlight is what happens over time. So I could see uh, the effect I had on, on the community of Duxbury um, over a period of years, there was projects that, that uh, really um, touched people or affected people. Um, community housing was a big thing and, um, you know, affordable housing and uh, getting those kind of projects done. Um, development of areas that, um, you know, had been neglected and seeing them turn around and, and get, uh, you know, developed in a responsible way. That was, that was pretty exciting. So stuff like that. Um, and then, I mean, there's always challenges, even you know, the challenges that we have here right now, uh, you know, you just had, uh, you know, four lanes of highway open up on going right through the middle of town, <laughs> you know, that'll, you know, bring an interesting dynamic to how that stretch of roadway gets developed over the next five to 10 years. So we want to make sure that it's done in a responsible way that doesn't have a, you know, a, a, a bad effect on the community, uh, but also provide services and goods and things that we do need for the community, whether it's you know, jobs or, or revenue or, um, or services that people want to use. So what are some of your plans for the future of Abington? What is on your list to get done to make this town better? Uh, it, well, it seems like since I got here, it seems town meeting after town meeting. But <laughs> for the most part, it's uh, um, organizationally, I, I want to uh, uh, bring in, you know, some policies, some best management practices and institute those which we're working on. 
Um, so there's, there's different things within the organization. Things externally um, that you would see would be community housing. I know there's a big need for senior housing. Um, one of the uh, big things that we pushed through at the last town meeting was developing or forming a, a, an affordable housing trust. And that's actually a group of people, these trustees that will have the ability um, to institute these projects, whether they are, um, they might partner with a developer that will put up um, senior housing, or it might be just affordable housing, or it might be market rate housing that has senior and affordable components to it. Um, but that's one big thing that I knew that, you know, that the community was looking for. Um, I'd like to work with some towns to regionalize some of our operations. Um, the uh, planning, uh, you know, the town doesn't have what's called a town planner. Uh, town planner is an important position because they sort of look at what the long-term idea, what the long-term focus of your town is. What are, you, what are you hoping to preserve? What are you hoping to develop? How do you want your development to go? Do you, you know, how do you make sure it's responsible development? Um, like I said, on, on that Route 18 corridor, just to make sure that you, know, you're, you're, you, you don't overbuild or overtax the infrastructure or the assets that we do have. So um, what I've been meeting with is other towns to see if they also would like to um, collaborate with me and we could all have sort of a joint planner that would look at the big picture of the whole area. It becomes more affordable and then it also takes in everybody's considerations rather than sort of just one town because that's also going to affect Rockland is going to affect mm. Whitman. Yeah. It's you know, so that that's a big thing um, that I would like to work on. Yeah. And by affordable housing, um, I, I I would want a little bit more specification. Does that mean more like condos, more apartments, or does that mean like specific neighborhoods with? Typically, um, so developments. It depends. Usually, a developer will put in a. It could be condos. Yeah. Um, it, it, and it depends. In certain areas, like you'll see over. In Weymouth, the um, the large developments, or even here near the train station, where that's more of a desirable um, element to have, will be a condominium structure where with multiple units and shared services and parking and whatever, and they can walk to the train station. And it's you know very you know attractive to people who want to commute. And now within that, there'll be within that number of units, there'll be a certain percentage of them. That would be considered affordable units. So, you know, a developer isn't going to make them all affordable units. He's going to make some that he can, you know, um, get the most money he can for them. Yeah. And then the trade off would be some of them would be regulated. Um, and some, like we said, you would ask sometimes for a um, maybe a, a senior housing um, component to it because that, you know, the population is aging and we, we have to, you know, keep that in mind and we have to make sure that we're you know, providing housing for them. We don't want them to have to leave the community because the, they can't afford to stay here. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you for coming on. It's, you know, it was a pleasure to finally get you down <laughs> yeah, here. It was, <laughs> it was great. Yeah, ask those hard questions. Um, I feel like my generation, we don't really know too much about the responsibilities of town government. Mm. And um, we really kind of, at least Matt and I, we made an emphasis, emphasis to kind of get to know um, our town government officials and get to know you and know what you do. So thank you so much for coming on and kind of letting us, letting us know what you do. Oh, well, thank you. Um, and I'm glad you did. And, and I encourage, at least in better days, I hope everybody does, um, you know, within your generation, take a look, a hard look at, at town government because that's where it all starts. And, and um, you know, the impact and the effect that you can have. If you look at how we operate, it's, uh, you know, it just blossoms, uh, you know, the, the town, the state, and the federal government all sort of work on that same notion. Um, you know, we're service providers, and we're providing safety, we're providing roads, we're providing education. Um, and, you know, in, in, in order to provide that, we tax. <laughs> so that's it in a nutshell. But as individuals, we all get to vote on those decisions mm -hmm. if we want to participate. So that's the whole thing is, um, you know, letting everybody know that there is a way to participate, there's a way to learn about it, show up at a town meeting. Um, the next one might be a little difficult because we'll still be under pandemic, but after that, uh, it's open town meeting mm -hmm. and everybody should come and everybody should watch and learn and participate. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for coming on. Yeah, thank you for having me. It was a great time.
Thanks for watching, and tune in next week for a brand new episode of The Weekly Wave. And make sure to follow us on all of our social media platforms at The Weekly Wave and The Green Wave Gazette. Stay safe. Goodbye, everybody.